So this week we're reading the story, The Origami Master, and it's by Nathaniel Lachenmeyer. The Origami Master. Shima, the Origami Master, lived alone, high up in the mountains. He never had any visitors. His origami kept him company. One day, a warbler chose the tree in Shima's backyard for his nest. It flew back and forth, collecting twigs. What do you think he's collecting the twigs for? To build the nest. When the warbler was done for the day, it sat on a branch and watched Shima doing origami. There he is, all of his colorful papers, preparing to make origami. From time to time, the warbler sang, ho ho kekyo, ho ho kekyo. That evening, after Shima went to bed, the warbler flew in through the open doorway and alighted on his desk. Wow. It began to fold a piece of paper in the way that it had seen Shima do. Do you believe the warbler is going to be able to make origami? Let's see. The next morning, Shima discovered some origami, a new paper elephant on his desk. He picked it up and examined it closely. It was simpler and more beautiful than any of the ones he had made. Someone is playing a trick on me, he thought. Well, we know who made this origami elephant. Will Shima find out? Shima threw his elephants away. He decided to make a dragon instead. In his opinion, origami dragons, his origami dragons were the best in the world. In the morning, Shima found a magnificent new dragon on his desk. It looked like he was, it was about to come to life and even fly back to its lair. This is a pretty fabulous dragon. Shima spent the day folding origami spiders. At dusk, he left his best spider on the desk and then he hid in the hole. He was determined to find out who was making his origami. Do you think he'll find out? There he is hiding. In the middle of the night, the warbler flew inside and began making an origami spider. Shima watched in amazement. He decided to try to catch the warbler and learn its secrets. He's curious to see how and why this warbler is so talented at origami. Just after sunrise, Shima hiked down the mountain to the city below. He bought a large bird cage and a lock, and he returned home. That night, Shima hid under his desk to catch him. When the warbler arrived, he caught it and put it in the cage. Oh. The warbler cried and beat its wings against the cage, but it could not escape. He's locked it. Doesn't seem like the warbler is very happy about his situation. Let's see what finds out. Shima brought the warbler his best origami paper, all these colors. And he even brought him some nuts and berries for the warbler to eat. But the warbler just stared sadly at his tree where his nest was waiting. He's longing to go home. Shima stayed up all night making every origami animal he could think of. The warbler did not look at any of them. He wasn't interested. Finally, as the sun rose in the sky, Shima fell asleep. He stayed up all night. What's going to happen as he's asleep? When Shima woke, he found the cage door open and the warbler gone. How did he escape? 
What do you think? The lock was lying next to the cage and beside it, can you see? An origami key. A warbler must have made it. Shima ran outside. The warbler's nest was empty. It made Shima sad to think that he had scared the bird away. Then he saw the warbler returning to the tree with a twig in its beak. He smiled when he heard the warbler's beautiful song, ho ho kekyo, ho ho kekyo. Shima realized how much he would miss the warbler if it left. He sat down and began to work on something new. What do you think he's gonna make? An origami nest for his new friend that he had made and almost lost. He wants him to feel at home. That's the end. And in the back, we have some how to make origami. Although you all received an origami pack in your goodie bags if you've come in and picked them up at the library. And next, we're going to spend some time working on that origami craft. We'll do it together. All right, we're going to try making some origami now. And you have several different sets of instructions in the goodie bags that you picked up for this week. But I'm going to demonstrate the origami box. I thought that would be a fun one to put in my new office. So if you'd like, follow along with me and let's make an origami box. We start with our paper. If you have a white side, you can put that side up. Mine's color on both sides. Either one is fine. So we're gonna fold our paper in half. We wanna crease it nice and strong. Unfold that. Then we're gonna fold it the other way, across, crease that. Now, if you open it up, you should have four little squares. Perfect. With these four squares, we're gonna take the corner of each of our four corners on the square and put it into the center of the square. Nice crease there and move around to each of the corners. Each one will come into the middle. Crease. It's very important in an origami to get the creases so that you can see the lines. And in the case of this box, they're gonna help us uh, create something that can stand on its own and stay strong. Okay, so we have all four corners in the center of our square. Now we're going to take the top and the bottom and the top we're going to fold a little bit over so that it can go into the center of the square. Let me show you how I've done that. So I folded it down and in, into the center. We're going to do the same thing with the bottom. Fold it up and into the center of the square. There. Then we get to unfold all of that and look at our beautiful creases. So unfold just the top and unfold just the bottom. Now we have a nice long uh, diamond looking shape. With this, we're going to fold one side over and then the other side over. So see how I do this. I'm going to take this side and fold it into the center, just like we did earlier on the top and the bottom. Nice big crease there. And the other side, fold it in towards the center. Crease, crease. And I have an even smaller shape, even smaller version of the, our last shape. Now that we have this, we're going to take the top. And this one is a little bit tricky, but you're gonna fold it over so that you can make a straight line. So you've got a line there and we're gonna crease it. Very good. Unfold it, and then guess what? You just do it the other way. Fold over, so we've got that line there, and crease it. Very nice. So we unfold those, and then we switch and do the other side. So fold it over, check to make sure you've got a line, and a line, crease, unfold, and the 
other direction. Fold it over, got a line and another line and crease it. Very nice, okay. So now we have lots and lots of lines as you can see. We are going to begin by uh, creating the structure of the box with all of these various creases. So this part is a little bit trickier. We're going to open up these two spots and begin to sort of create the walls. So this one, we're gonna push up. Oops. It's almost like you've got your walls here on the sides. And then we're gonna push it up. Some of it's gonna come in. Do you see that? So some of it's gone in to create little corners and the walls are still there. And then to make it nice and strong, we're gonna keep those corners on the inside and push this end down so that it's nice and tight. And you can kind of press along the floor and the walls in the side. And you've got your first set of that wall. And then we do the same thing on the other side. So we sort of press these in Make sure that this back wall is coming up. And then once you've got those corners nice and clear, you can press this top side over and down, pushing, pushing so that it's nice and flat. And then bam, those are nice and tight. So you have got your whole little box, all four corners. You can take the inside if you'd like so that those stay down and then you can decorate it. The next fun part is that you can always make a second one to put on top and you have a box with a lid. So try making these at home. You can do different colors, different designs. I'd love to see what you can make. And if you'd like, you can always bring your stuff into the library to show us or to give us a gift. Thank you so much for making this origami box with me today. And I will see you all next week for our fourth week of summer reading. Bye.